Today is Monday, August 1st, 2022, and today I think I'm going to go back to doing text animations because if I don't do something for a long time, I forget it. So I'm um, just going to make um, just a quick one, kind of like the originals. And so let's see if I remember. So geometry nodes, I have a spreadsheet, and then click on new, and then disconnect this from the output. Do shift A, string to curves. And then connect that to my output so I'll be able to see my string. And I guess today I'm going to do today um, is Monday. And then I'll do shift A and do a transform node and put that in there to kind of rotate it 90, 90 degrees along the x axis, which is the red one. Um, and then to give it a fill, I'll do shift A and do a fill curve and put that in there and change the fill type to n-gons because if I go to wireframe I can see that the fill type is very messy so I'll just change it to n-gons and then I'll do shift a extrude the mesh to add some thickness to the letters and I'll just change the value to be 0.1 and I'll be able to see the thickness but if I go back into solid mode I can see that it's not filled in the back and so the way to fix this is to do shift a thing shift a and get a join geometry node which is going to join basically both the extrude mesh ge um the ex i can't even speak the extrude mesh node and the fill curve node once i connect that so now it's filled in the back and then what i'll do is i'll just go in here and change the font to arial black in the folder and i think that's it honestly um and then Oops. I'll go here and do shift A and get a translate instances node. Maybe this is the part that I'm forgetting. Shift A, translate instances, and then shift A. I know I have to use a float curve that kind of can um, take takes care of the bounciness here. Um, so translate instances and then the float curve makes it bouncier. So let me see what am I forgetting. So I want it to move. So maybe a shift. So shift A combine X, Y, Z because I want it to move along a certain axis. But then this is going to have to be connected to something. And I believe that geez, the vector. What do I want it? Oh, an empty. All right. So shift A and I'll add an empty. Um, I'll do a sphere, object data properties, change it to single arrow, and then how shall I do this? Combine X, Y, Z, because I want this to be the simple one, not the water one. Let me think. The float curve. Combine X, Y, Z, and set that to... Translation. Oh, let me look at my notes. Let me go back down to kind of like the first ones that I did. All right, let me look at the video. Should be this one. I can control it now as I would. Okay, move on. Oh, now I remember. Multiply the color ramp to flip the stuff. I just wanted to know where to connect the empty to. I forgot that part. Oh, the position. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense now. All right, so. All right. So I'll do shift A to get a position node and I'll do shift A to get a object. Actually, I'll get a vector math node and change it so that it's calculating the distance because I was questioning where this comes in. So the empty, 
um, basically is going to control the movements or the bounciness of this uh, string, right? And so the way that it's going to control it is relative to the distance of the letter that it's that it's at. So what I'll do is I'll go in to the outliner and drag the empty here to get the object information out of the empty. And then it's going to, this node is basically going to calculate the um, distance between the first vector, which is each of the letters, and then the second vector, which is the, um, what do you call it? This, um, the empty, which is this controller thing here. And then that is what's going to act as the translation over here, right? So notice that, for example, just to make sense of it, the position of the letter T is zero at the beginning. And then the position, let me go, at the beginning, right, the position or the distance, right, from um, the distance between T and the empty is zero. And so because that's zero, that should be zero. And so when I move it to the translation, it shouldn't translate anywhere. As you can see, the T stays at the same place because the trans the distance between it um, between the um, empty and that letter is zero and therefore it's going to translate zero meters, right? But as you can see, O at the beginning was had a bit of distance right between um, itself and the empty and so that's why it moves when I go in translation. All right, and then I believe that I have to add this one in to the Z or not to the Y. Okay, so it moves up and down and then I also have to add a float curve somewhere in here and I don't know if it's going to be um, after before, right? So that it's moving kind of like that. And then shift A to multiply. Nope, that's the wrong one. Um, which, which one is it? Vector? Is it vector math or just a normal multiplier? Multiply. I think it's shift A math node. And then, whoops. And it's just simply multiply. And I believe that multiplies the value of the uh, float curve g x so now it's bouncy yay it's so beautiful and so this multiplier node if i go to front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front um the multiplier node basically um extends the height that the bounce the letters bounce to so if i move this to two it's going to go way up as you can clearly see so if i move the empty right it's going to go way 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 up um but i'll leave it as Maybe let me play around with it and see what's nice. I guess that's fine. All right, and then now to animate it. Before that, though, let me do Control S to save that. And then, what's the date? Date uh, eight. It was August first. Desktop. Okay, except for there. Okay, whatever. Let me go to layout, and then for the actual rendering. Oh my god, I forgot one thing, the color. Let me go back. Geometry nodes, where is it? Geometry nodes, go here. And then go here, and then let me go and choose a color real quick. Colors. Palette generator. Any day now would be great. All right. So, um, oh, I like these three colors. How about I do one more thing? So if I go into shading, because I don't want to forget how to do this either. I need to practice. Shading. Hello, is this thing okay? It's frozen. Let me come back one instant. All right, so I don't want each ind um, individual letter. Well, I don't want all the letters to be the same color. And so in order for it to be different colors, and if, and if specifically if it's a geometry node, I have to go into shading and I have to get um, a shift A, I have to do a color ramp and put that in there. And then I also have to get the object information node of this. Oops, not that one. Shift A, object information node and put that in there. All right, and that kind of determines my color. So here, what I would do is I would go to my colors and I choose my colors, right? So maybe this one. And I'll just select the tag and go here, hex, and then paste that color in there. And then I'll go back and I'll select this one. It's giving McDonald's. Select the tag, go into the color, paste it as a hex code. And I won't be able to see it yet um, because I haven't connected it anywhere. So I connect it to the base color. And then I have to go back to my geometry nodes and make it so that it realizes that um, 
I'm setting that material to be that material. So set material node, put that in there, and then I can choose a material. And then I'll be able to see if I go back. Oh my god, that's the wrong thing. Okay, shading. Now I'll be able to see it. But notice that it's not red and it's very like like a gradient, and that's not what I want. I want it to be each letter to be like either that color or the other. So I'll change the linear to be constant, and then I'll change um I'll connect the random to the factor so that it's randomly um because if I do this, it's not going to do anything. But if I do random, oh my god, what's going on? And connect it to the factor, then it's going to give each letter either or color. All right, so let's wait for that to happen. Okay, so it's looking a little eh, but that's okay. Maybe I can add another color, maybe something that contrasts a little bit. Um, so I'll just click on the plus sign and just add another color over here. This thing freezes every single time I just click on something. All right, and then which one didn't I add? Maybe this one. Add another color over here. Change that to this color. Maybe white. Does this even go together? Do these colors even go together, honestly? Today is Monday. Maybe I want more yellow. Something like that. Click on... If I put this color in, would it look ugly? Kind of, yeah. Let me delete that color. Alright, so I'll kind of leave it like this, so that's good. I kind of want to practice that. So this object information node, though, comes from, I believe, honestly... What is the object information of the, is it of the, um, I wonder, I don't even know where this is coming from, because usually it would be the information of an object, but what information, I guess it's of the geometry node. Anyway, that's the color ramp thing, principal BSDF, base color output, that's it. All right, now actual to the rendering, the, I can't even speak, oh my god, the rendering part, onto the rendering part. Um, or the animation part. So I kind of go from view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front and then go a little bit up, um, kind of scroll up my timeline and I kind of like to do 80 frames. So let me do that. And so at frame one, I like to start um, right before it starts affecting the letter T. So kind of about this position. And then I press on end to kind of pull up my end panel, make sure I'm in transform. And then the position that it's currently at and the X axis, right? I'm going to hover over that position and I'm going to press I to insert a location keyframe right on my timeline, which is going to present itself as a little yellow diamond in keyframe one. And so now at the end, I'm going to go to keyframe 80 and at the end of the video, right? I want it so that it's at the end. So I'll move this all the way towards the end, right after it stops affecting the letter Y, kind of about here, and I'm going to hover over that specific location and press I over that location. And now if I go back to one and I play it, it's going to go through the entire animation and it's going to start at the position that I wanted to start at and it's going to end at the position that I wanted it to end at. And it's going to basically show that um, animation. And so that's that. And then for the rendering part of it, I'm going to go to the, um, I'm going to go up plus video editing, video editing scroll this all the way here and then what i'll do is um actually let me go to layout before doing this um i just go to output properties and i have to align my camera to this so maybe i'm going to do shift a plane like a backdrop so it looks pretty so g to grab x s to scale G, Z to bring it down, E, not E, tab to go into edit mode, edge select, select the back edge, E to extrude, S to scale upwards, and then maybe I'll just do G, Z, kind of put it like that, um, or maybe not, maybe I want it to be G, Z kind of on the floor over here, and then what I'll do is, um, I'll do control alt numpad zero to align my camera to the view, to get out of that, I press the middle mouse button, to get back into the view, I press zero. Right, so I don't like that view, so let me do something like that. Alright, and so that's two. 
pretty easy. Okay, and then I think that works, right? And so I'll just go ahead and give the, let me control S and the material properties and then give this thing a background here, a background color, which I don't even know what it's going to be, honestly. What color would be contrasting? Maybe something like this. I don't like that. What would be a contrasting color? Base color, hex, paste that in there? Nah. It needs to be like a lighter color. No, never mind. Maybe this? Something like that? I don't know, I'm gonna go with that color. So that color, by the way, is 1842.60 as a hex code. Um, alright, so now if I play, I just wanna make sure everything is in the frame. Okay, that's good. And then now I'm gonna go to output properties. And I'm just going to select a folder in which I want all my images to go to. So for me, I have Blender, and I'm just going to create um, an animations folder and just put in, I don't know, what's today's date? Um, 8 one and it's Monday or whatever, I don't know. Put that in there and accept. And so this is the folder where all of my 80 images are going to be exported as PNG images. And so I'm just going to render render animation and wait for this to load um but yeah i meant to say it's where all of my what do you call it um i can't even speak right now it's where all of my what do you call it um oh all of my frames are going to render um by the way let me delete this because i this is like not okay right now. It's starting. It's literally floating. I meant, let me open this up, desktop, blender, animations, the only folder that I have, and delete the frames that were already rendered because it kind of goes fast. All right, so let me delete that and kind of just make one little tweak. I just have to make sure that this plane is all the way touching the bottom over here and it's clearly not so i'm just gonna turn on snapping snap into face and then do g z did i not turn that on are you serious g z why does it ever snap what about vertex okay you know what whatever let me just delete this then all right let me just go a little bit like that I wonder how would I get it to be cheesy because it's not looking really like uh, whatever I don't really care too much okay let me just render render animation and I'll come back when it's rendered all right so um, at this point I go to the folder that I you know dedicated for all of the um frames to render in and i can see that there are 80 frames just like i had or 80 images just like i had 80 frames in blender so i'm just going to go back um to this and oh i can still see that it's the same but whatever um i can go up scroll down video editing if you don't have that go to plus video editing video editing scroll this thing all the way to zero zero if it's not already add image sequence and then i go to that dedicated folder and all i have to do is just select the first image scroll all the way down and shift select the last one and that selects everything in between add the image strip and then i can see that it's basically added together like a like a video and then now at this point all i have to do is i change the i don't have to do this but i like to just have a dedicated folder within the images so that i could just really access the folder quickly um, so the video is going to go there and then the file format is going to be ffmpeg video um, and then for the encoding just make sure the container is mpeg4 and that's um, oh and the output quality high quality and that's it so control s and then go back scroll um, up and then render render animation and it should be um, definitely taking less time than it did to render each image um and then yeah it's looking like that 
And then real quick, if I just go into the file um, or the folder that I told the video to render, it should be there in a few seconds. All right, and here it is. This is the final result. And I'll just go ahead and kind of like make it loop for a few seconds. Oops. Right. <clears throat> and that's the final result. You know what I just realized? Something's off about it. Obviously something's off about it. It's going back up again for some reason. That's so weird. It's because it's missing frames, that's why I noticed that. Yeah, it's definitely missing frames. Because I don't think that even happens over here. Oh my god, it does. Oh wow. You know what? Whatever. I don't really care. It's fine. Let's call it a new style. Um, Where's my... Did I close the video? Okay, you know what? Whatever. Bye. I, I'm opening random things.